if you eat fat, it's going to end up in fat storage, regardless if you have the spike of an insulin or not, right? Yes. And that's what, and this, so if you're, if someone's a type two diabetic, if you drink a whole gallon of heavy cream, right? Tomorrow morning, 12 hours later, you're going to have the highest fasting blood sugar you've ever seen. Yes. And all of the whole low carbosphere is like, whoa, there must have been, look at the trace carbs in heavy cream. It's yeah. got to be those trace carbs. They don't get it. It's like when you eat all this fat, it slowly, passively goes into your fat cells, enlarges them all. You're slightly fatter. You're slightly more insulin resistant. Your fasting insulin has to go up just to try to hold it back out of your bloodstream. And then your sugar has to go up too because you don't have any place for any energy to go. And so fat is basically eventually isocalorically raising your insulin just as much as carbs are, but it's raising basal insulin. Carbs raise yeah. glucose and insulin immediately and then it goes back down. Fat just raises your basal insulin because now you're fatter and you're more insulin resistant. And I think a lot of people don't get that. And, yeah. and you know, glucometers are not helping because everyone looks at their glu yeah, glucometer, they get a big right. spike and they're like, oh, well that was bad. Yeah, if you could actually see your basal creeping up 12 hours later where you're slightly fatter and slightly more insulin resistant, um, or if you had a glucometer that showed you your triglycerides because you drink your heavy cream, your oil, your triglycerides are going to do this four times higher thing or more if you're over fat. I mean, like we, I've seen extreme triglyceride excursions in people who are eating a lot of fat. Like, you know, we get these crazy numbers in the clinic. And so yeah. you don't have a triglyceride glucometer at home. I guess it would be called a triglyceridometer or whatever, yeah. but you don't have that at home. And if you did, if you had a sensor that showed you your free fatty acids and your insulin and your um, triglycerides at all these time points, you'd realize, oh, hey, when I eat refined fat, the next morning, I'm like way worse metabolically than I am right now. And another question related to that I've had, uh, uh, sometimes people will see a higher fasting glucose in the morning if they overeat fat the prior day. Can you talk about that connection? Uh, hell yes. And like, it's exactly just what I was saying. Like imagine right now, do a thought experiment or right now you eat a hundred pounds of butter, right? Um, and tomorrow morning, 12 hours later, your every fat cell in your body is like expanded, right? Now all your cells are really refusing glucose, right? Um, your triglycerides are gonna be higher because the fat cells don't want fat. Um, your muscle cells are filled with fat, so they don't want glucose. All your cells are in energy refusal mode in that, and then your blood sugar is going to be way higher. Your insulin is going to be higher because it's trying to get the fuels out of the bloodstream, but it can't. All your cells are full. Your Everything goes up, right? And so that's how fat makes you fatter and more insulin resistant. It's just such a slow process. It's really showing up, you know, 12 hours down the road. So it's very confusing to a lot of type 2 diabetics. They're like, man, I never eat carbs. It, but my fasting sugar is, you know, 150. What the hell? Uh, it's literally how many grams of fat you ate the day before, full this stop. Is, this is so and frustrating. I was on, uh, I went to Costa Rica to be on a television show with a couple doctors, and I was the chef. And I planned, you know, protein meals or whatever. But then they all brought in all of this heavy cream, and they were like, I'm fasting until one o'clock, Maria. I was like, you just put like 500 calories in your coffee. You are not fasting. Do not be mistaken. But other people were telling them that is okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, hopefully everybody will look back at this sort of thing 10 or 20 years ago, and it'll just be a laughing stock. I mean, I think we're already at that point but not everybody is. And so, yeah, we just need to get more people to realize that refined fat is not helping anyone with anything at all ever, period. But going yeah, back but, to the CGM uh, issue, I wore a CGM and my highest numbers were when I was running. And we are getting a lot of people like buying these, you know, CGMs or trying them out. And they're like, oh, I ate so much protein and it went up so much. I was like, that's not always a bad thing. So does it mean I should stop running because my blood sugar went up? Exactly. That's a beautiful point. Like, like most people uh, hit, you know, diabetic range glucose when they're doing maximum intensity exercise. And that's not harmful and that's not bad for you. And these spikes in the glucose are not necessarily that terrible. And what you're not seeing is your giant spike in triglycerides when you ate all that fat. Like if people could literally see that, they would be like, oh, hey, refined carb, refined fat both doing crazy stuff to the fuels in my bloodstream, 
both have horrible type or calorie. Uh, both are not helping my body composition. <clears throat> Maybe I should eat some protein instead. Well, I think in the, the CGMs are great. And for a lot of people, they can really be enlightening if depending on their diet. But what I think is good, kind of happening in, in certain communities, especially with the you know kind of bad information that people follow in the keto community about glucose and insulin, um, is that it can actually be counterproductive in a lot of cases. And we have people doing this where they're like, well, I ate more protein, but my, my glucose went up 20 points or my glucose spiked. And we're like, well, okay, how much? Like 20 points. It sounds so it's like, okay, went from 80 to 100. So what, right? <laughs> like they want this flat line for glucose. And yeah. Not necessarily the best way. It, it really isn't. <clears throat> yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, it's just really eating through your glucometer can be problematic because you'd literally just eat butter all day long. Yeah. And then you'd wonder why now your fasting sugar is, you know, 150, even though you never eat carbs. And that it, it's just, it's definitely a problem. It's a huge problem. So on that uh, 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 related question that I want to make sure to ask, ask, which is, so you get some people who will then say, okay, I'm going to lower my fat and I'm going to up my protein. And as a result, they end up with higher fasting glucose the next day or, you know, over a course of a week or whatever in the mornings, it might fasting glucose might creep up to hundred, 110. So in those cases, what's happening and is that a concern? Well, probably they're actually eating more grams of fat than they realize. And they probably are getting slightly worse. Uh, <clears throat> uh, like for example, let's say you're a diabetic, but you do everything right. You're just eating lean protein, super high satiety per calorie, um, you're shaving off grams of carbs and fat, uh, you're exercising, you're losing weight, you will steadily see your fasting blood sugar get lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. That will happen. There might be blip, there's up and downs. It's never linear. You know, there'll be days yeah. where you're just your cortisol stresses you out and it'll be higher and you'll be like, I don't know what happened. But the, like if you if you zoom way out and look at the trend over weeks and months and years, you will steadily have a lower fasting blood sugar if you're doing all the right stuff. And that's higher satiety per calorie diet, which is usually way more protein and way less refined carbs and fats and exercise to deplete, um, you know, intramuscular triglycerides and stuff sleep? like that. What's that? What about sleep? Is there a relation there? Oh sleep? yeah. Huge relationship. Like just sleep deprivation will immediately increase insulin resistance and cortisol and stress and all these things. So there are all these other factors, but it's true that if you're doing everything right over time, you should see your fasting blood sugar yeah. go down if it's, if it's abnormally high. And so that is that usually means you're doing something wrong and it's typically having no actual clue how many grams of fat you're eating a day. That, I agree with that. You know, there's studies that show that people on average underestimate how many calories they eat by like 45% mm -hmm. and overestimate their exercise by like 41% or something crazy like right. that. Uh, but, you know, back to that, there are some people that they say they are getting a, you know, a lower amount of fat and they up the protein. And I think this might be related to insulin resistance. So if they're insulin resistant, they might initially, until they can shrink those fat cells, is it, is it possible that uh, the morning fasting glucose could go up because of the insulin resistance? Well, I mean, yeah, the more insulin resistant you are, the more your blood sugar goes up. But again, and, and again, there's a lot of other factors like day-to-day -day cortisol and stress and sleep and blah, blah, blah. But uh, honestly, if you're doing everything right, your blood sugar should be eventually lower. So uh, the first thing I would suspect in someone who says, oh, hey, I'm doing what you told me, but my um, fasting blood sugar is going up, uh, you, you really have to literally count how many grams of fat you're eating every day. Because everybody in the low carb world, we know our carbs. Oh, I eat 20 grams of carbs. Like we're tracking our carbs. We know our carbs. I'm trying to go from one gram of carb a day to, to zero by never eating any salads. And now I'm just a carnivore uh -huh. uh, or, you know, I was a raw carnivore, but I was worried about glycogen in the liver I was eating. So like, you know, if you're trying to shave your carbs super low, uh, you might have absolutely no clue how many grams of fat you're eating a day. And so, you know, like a lot of people in the low carb world, they can't really tell you how many grams of fat they ate a 